Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what up? Jesse Warden here. I hope you had a good spring break. I sure did. Today and tomorrow's videos is a two-part series to, to show you how you use asynchronous code in RxJS. One of the nice things about RxJS is that it is a streaming mechanism, very similar to Lodash Chain, to help you parse your data in a simple fashion. So you have a bunch of pure functions, you take these little pure functions, you unit test them, but you kind of take for granted that RxJS doesn't care if that's synchronous or asynchronous or another stream. It's a very powerful feature. And so what we're gonna do is show you how you do asynchronous code through promises and then parse that data you get back in a synchronous way using Lodash chain. And you can see, okay, this is how I have these two separate pieces of styles of coding, both pure functions, then combine them together. We'll use that example so you can compare it with the RxJS way of doing the same exact thing, but you're using the Rx stream and you don't care if it's synchronous or asynchronous and you basically do the same operation. Both are gonna contain pure functions that we can apply in, you know, make it easier to unit test. But hopefully this contrast should really help you understand, I get you, this is where the really power of RxJS from an asynchronous perspective comes. It's not just a Lodash with list comprehensions that do all these amazing things with other list comprehension chainers, but it deals with that asynchronous stuff that's extremely common on the clients in the browser, on the server in Node, or just local DevOps on the client in Node. Oh, I got <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Morgan. Now, part one of this two-part series is to show how you get massive amounts of JSON in asynchronous fashion using promises, and then parse that return value using pure functions in Lodash. A lot of the JSON that you get from Amazon is a wonderful example because it's real world, very, very large, and it has deeply nested structures, which requires multiple passes of parsing. Using a streaming mechanism like Lodash or RxJS makes it a lot simpler to read and debug, and you can kind of plug in pure functions to that to make it easier to unit test that big old stream. The example we're gonna use today is AWS Lambda list functions. I have a bunch of Lambda functions on my account. What I'm looking for are the old ones, the ones that have no JS43. So not the new node 610, not Python. Roles are not using Lambda basic execution. What that allows it to do is print to CloudWatch. That's it. If it has some kind of custom role and an old node I need to know about. It. Let's do our pure function, which gets that exact same JSON, but through JavaScript, the JavaScript SDK for AWS. And what this does is returns a promise. So pure function, I can pass in Lambda. It makes it a lot easier to test this function because I can pass in a mock. I always get a promise back. I don't have to worry about callbacks where I have to create it and verify it works or not. If we call pure list functions, it'll give us back the same JavaScript in the then function. So if we say list functions, pass in our Lambda here, then we get a result and then log it out and then say node index, we'll get the exact same JSON that you just saw. It's an object with the functions property, has an array of all the functions. To parse that JSON, that big old list, get that JSON out, let's say const parse out old node functions, and it takes the Lambda JSON that we just got there, and we're gonna use Lodash chain because it's gonna take a few passes to get this JSON right. Let's get the functions using Lodash's safe way of getting properties. So from this big old thing, we're gonna safely get functions. Now we have an array of functions. That array, we need to filter out only or include only the Lambda functions. And if you don't remember what a Lambda function is, Lambda function is this object that it gives you back. So this JavaScript object, we only wanna include the ones, we use get to safely get it, that have the runtime of Node.js 4.3. Now that's great, except we want to also include the ones that don't have basic execution. Don't doesn't apply to filter because that's yes. If you turn true, it's going to be included. If you don't, it's going to be excluded. We need the opposite. Lodash has something called reject, which does the opposite of filter. So if it returns true, it's not included. To verify the basic, it's going to take a little bit more code to actually verify if that rolls there. It's a big old string. Let's create a predicate and show you how you can put predicates in there. And we'll use the same thing for ArcGIS as well. If we give it a role, we can verify that it is in fact a string and that the role index of has lambda basic execution in it. If that's the case and that index is greater than negative one, then we know it's in there somewhere. We, it's a big old arn, all we care about. If that string's in there, it's probably a basic execution role. Let's use that predicate and pass in the get lambda function role and that will exclude anything that has the basic execution. So we're only gonna get the old nodes with the old roles. And lastly, we call value to actually pop out that parsed array from this. So lazy evaluation, nothing happens till you actually call this. Wrap this up, we're gonna say get old node functions, takes no parameters. What this does is return the list functions call with our Lambda. 
we get the lambda json, but we gotta parse it first. So let's go ahead and say the old functions, parse out old functions, parse out, oh my God, I can never spell, parse out old functions. So that lambda json is that big old result that it gives us back. However, we're in promise land, so the only way to return values from promise land is return another promise. So say promise resolve, here's my old functions. Whoever up the chain calls this, there then will get this, not this. So let's show you how that works. Old node functions. Log it out, old node functions. And just in case it errors out, we'll take the error and log that out too. Now when you call it, you'll see two from that array. It's the ones that have the custom roles and they are of the old node runtime. There's only two of them. So that is how you do it in Lodash. The key things to memorize here, don't worry about the predicate. We'll reuse that because that's a good practice whether you're using Lodash or ArcGIS, doesn't matter. Key points here are we have asynchronous code here to list functions. So we have a promise, but within that promise, our parsing function is not asynchronous. It is a very synchronous process. And although it looks like a stream, each one of these is a synchronous pure call that goes one after the other. Whether it goes one after the other or single values like ArcGIS doesn't really matter. The point here is that none of this is asynchronous. All of this is asynchronous. And matching the two requires, you know, pure function, pure function, and then kind of wrapping it with a promise. That is how you do it with a promise in Lodash. Next up, we'll show you how to do it with the RxJS from promise.